Hello and welcome to one of the greats. <sighs> Today, um, I'm beyond excited as always, but this time is so special because um, I'm here with someone that opened a portal for me to be me in a way I didn't know was possible. And I, it was so important for me to present Christine to you, to have you meet Christine, because I've never been received as a human being like I have been with you, Christine. It was so beautiful and it opened my heart to something. It opened my heart to myself. And that is so, so, so powerful. And I want this for every single one of you and one of the greats. I want this for the entire planet. There's a freedom to just be able to feel and to be able to just allow whatever is. And you created that space for me, Christine. And I wanted the world to discover more of that magic. So welcome. Mm. Thank you so much. And as always, every time we get on a call, and even right now, I'm deeply moved. And it is so wonderful to witness you in your greatness and what you're bringing to the world and what your mission is with really uplifting humanity and really allowing evolution and growth over our lifetimes. And so I get to be part of witnessing you and walking alongside you shoulder to shoulder. Um, and so thank you for the, the vulnerability and the break open that I got to witness with you. It, um, it's my, um, my gift that um, I you know, was, was given in this world is to really hold people in the totality of their messiness and their brilliance and their confidence and their downright shitty <laughs> stuff is hard sometimes. And so thank you for giving me that opportunity. Mm, it was a pleasure. <laughs> well, not at the moment I was living it, but <laughs> right now that I look back on it, it was a pleasure. But and we did some so much like trauma work. We went deep. And it was like the, I want to share this one moment with you, with with you, with all of you, that where um I don't know what I was living, but actually I remembered a, a memory from the past when I was young and I think I was four years old and I kind of broke my arm in the car doing something that I like I jumped over a seat and I broke my arm and and I remember not telling my mother because I was so scared of what she was going to tell me because it was not okay that I jumped over and on top of it I jumped over and I probably broke my arm so it's been days that my arm is broken and I have to lift it everywhere I go but my mother finally notices that I'm kind of like my face is saying there's something wrong but your reaction at that moment to what I was telling you was so heartfelt so powerful so oh my god like like take care of Mini Marie like she went to something like that was so big and I was just the human the the adult telling you this like in a very like it's normal it's like that's what happened and that's it but that day I was like, oh, you know how people like how we treat little kids, how we take care of them and like love them. But I never thought of doing that with myself. Right. Your reaction was so visceral, like it shook me like and like it made space for a brand new world. Absolutely. You know, and each one of us have the mini Marie's or the, the little sweet peas or the little, you know, the little parts of us that at very crucial times in our life, we, we didn't have, we just, our parents didn't attune to us in the way that we needed it to. I'm not saying they didn't love us. I'm not saying they were bad parents. I'm saying they didn't hit the mark when it was really crucial for us. And there, therein lies some of the reasons why we have these really young responses to reactions within our lives. Why, you know, we'll be speaking with a partner and all of a sudden we just kind of shut down. Or, 
we want to say something to our business partner and, you know, we just like roll it in our head and 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 then come out with something that's like totally people pleasing. And we're like, whoa, you know, where, where are these responses coming from? And so in those moments when someone organically pulls up that little part of themselves to say, it's, it's like, I look at it as like, like, look, like this, this is hurting still. This is suffering. And the older part of us very easily says, oh, it's no problem. <laughs> look how competent I am or whatever the case may be. But there's these little parts that I, I often say we've orphaned off. We've, mm-hmm. we've kind of cut and like put in the background And so it's in those moments when we can just say, ah, there, there, love, come, come more, show me, show me what it was like for you. And in those moments, the, some of the deepest repairs can happen. And when those repairs happen, it, it, it changes the makeup of who we are. There's more worthiness that comes in. Our self-trust of who we are gets to start to ignite. We recognize that the parts that might be more tender, a lot of us are very sensitive. So the parts of us that are more tender, um, it's like, oh my goodness, come closer. Allowing those, that beautiful tenderness and softness of who we are to come forth. So we all have those little mini Marie's and the little sweet peas and the little, we all have them. And so when they show up, wow, I, I, I marvel at those little parts as if I'm looking at a, a little ladybug for the first time, like a three-year-old was going to look at the, a ladybug. It's like, wow, show me more. I'm so curious. So thank you for that and it's very easy to repair with somebody when they're so raw and vulnerable and that's hard vulnerability is hard for a lot of people and the way I see it as you were describing it to me it's almost that worship energy Mm -hmm. there's a worship for what was And I love that you allowed me to make space for that. And as one of the greats, we're choosing because no one's going to give you permission to be a great, right? No one's, don't wait for it. I mean, I'm giving it to you now, but it doesn't matter. You're the only one to give give it to you. You're one of the greats. If you choose to be, you're going to claim that seed. And I'm like, Christine, how, like, how do we get into that energy of, yeah, that's who I am. Like I belong. Mm. I choose to be home. I, ch- I choose this to be my place. Who sister, I have goosebumps through my whole body. That is a big question. And one that needs honoring and, and needs to be talked about with other fellow women. Five years ago, someone called me a leader. No, it wasn't even. It was probably about 10 years ago. Someone called me a leader and my whole body shut down. I couldn't go to the bathroom for two days. I was like, I am not a leader. And then organically, what I mean by organic, it's like, you know, just like things in in life started to really, you know, come forth. So I've been doing this work for over 20 years. And even though... I still didn't see myself as a leader. I still didn't hold that power. I still felt broken, undone, um, like I couldn't speak what was important to me. Mm. So I went on a big quest to see, okay, how does this work? You know, like I, I know people who are very comfortable in who they are. And I'm not that. And it was honestly a mind shift. I thought to myself one day, 
I want to have a legendary life. I want to be used up when I am on my deathbed. I want to give every single thing I am, I have, I've learned, I've loved. I want to just open up and be like, wow, I had a well used life. Mm, loving it. I can't sit in the corner with that kind of self prophecy. I can't, I can't do it. So then I thought, well, what is a legendary life? Just stuff I love doing things I thoroughly 100% and passionate about. And the more we are able to follow those little nuggets of things that, that ignite us, that bring passion, that, that make us feel alive, that is the, that momentum of, of really guiding, guiding ourselves to having a legendary life. So what is a great? Well, everybody. Everybody is a great. There are situations in my life that really woke me up. I was in Thailand one time and I was eating this really cool food, <clears throat> um, sweating because it was like tons of like chilies. And I was just like, wow, <laughs> this stuff wakes your ass up real quick. Like you are like, woo, you are alive. And I remember looking outside and there was this man sweeping the street. And never in my life had I seen somebody that present, that dedicated, that passionate as sweeping a street. And in that moment, I thought, huh, it's not about being a brain surgeon. It's not about being the NFL person, it is about doing your life with a quality of, of passion, with a quality of sometimes I'm going to be scared and I'm going to have piddle running right down my legs because I'm so scared and I'm doing it anyways. I'm going anyways. So there's a, there's a misconception when it comes to being a great that you have to be doing this exalted work. And it's not the truth. It's about living your life with heart, mm -hmm. <laughs> with your heart, with, with, with your skills and abilities, with your woundedness, with your rough around the edges parts, with your sense of humor, whether it be dry or witty or or outrageous or inappropriate. It's about really finding, finding those parts of yourselves that ignite you. And we have this mis misconception that we're different then. We don't belong with the greats. And it's a bunch of bullshit. It's complete bullshit. Because the only gap in humanity is thinking that we're different then. And we're not. Mm -hmm. Marie, when you and I stand shoulder to shoulder, that is us holding each other in our greatness, seeing each other. It really, it really is about believing, believing that you have something to offer, whether you're a, a mother, a street sweeper, a gas attendant, a oh, uh, you're looking after your family and their geriatric folks, like, is it bringing you alive? Can you find the aliveness in it? Mm. Because life will not always be easy. Can you find the aliveness in it? Can you find the pleasure in amongst the heart? Mm. I love, love, love what you're bringing because the image that came was I remember when we were working together, I wasn't really exposing myself as a coach. And I remember this moment where I told you, well, I'm a coach. And that was a moment where I decided I'm one of the greats. Like I belong in that. I belong. I belong. Yeah. And I remember you said, well, I know I see you as that. And to me, it was like, oh, she does. But what I want to bring to all of us and all of you guys at one of the greats is that 
anywhere you choose to go, the other grades, they're just going to pull the chair out for you and say, yeah, you have your place here, sister. But Mm -hmm. none of them will take your place for you. Oh, yeah, you got it. So you'll be sitting there, but are you going to be you there? Yeah. And that's where it matters. So no matter the image that come as you were talking is like, no matter which group you're in, if you feel like you don't belong, some most of the time we're just going to leave group, right? We're going to think we don't belong. And I'm thinking, uh, no, you're the gift they were missing. Yes. So you can bring yourself to those groups when you feel there's something missing where you don't belong. Sometimes it's like you can be you there. They're needing your magic, your unique genius, your your experience, your aliveness, your fun, all of you is welcome. Mm-hmm. So tell me, because uh, not tell me, but tell me, tell everyone at one of the greats more about your magic, because I tasted it. I lived it. I'm like trying mm-hmm. to like, I want for people to live it, but it's, yeah. I, I How do you feel your magic? Because I know all of them are like often in the process of like, allowing themselves to be themselves they're in the process of discovering themselves and I know that sometimes touching other people's genius is like oh I'm like that too I can bring (laughs) that to the world so tell me more about you and your genius Christine oh man thank you for that question it's um it's a humbling question and one that I'm deeply proud about because I've had many mentors and coaches um, blow wind underneath my wings in order for me to get here. And that's, that's my truth. So when I couldn't believe in people, other people believed in me and I was like, Mm -hmm. Oh, right. You know, how did I forget? I just need to remember. So over the last 25 years, I've done body work and energy work and mediumship and, and, somatic experiencing, which is trauma work. Um, I'm a um, a erotic blueprint coach. So all the accreditation aside, because that's just like certificates and that sort of stuff. What I recognized was people are doing, people are trying to get to an exalted state typically. They're just trying to have a good life where they wake up, they feel free, content, and life is good, right? But there's a few things in which you, 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 there's kinds of, there's like these things that need to happen. And one is usually you need to remove some of the weeds, so to speak, or, you know, that can be trauma or, you know, belief systems or old patterns, um, you know, family, family dynamics, generational stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes those just need to like (laughs) shake loose. Once that shakes loose, what I found was all of this unreal um, energy, this creative energy. Sometimes it looks like sexual energy. Sometimes it looks like just this creative, like, like this just huge, beautiful, vital energy, life force energy. So what I love to watch and witness in people is somebody coming to me. And of course I see, I see people as their potential. I see, I see the beauty in them. I see, it's really easy to see people when we actually see them with our hearts. It's so simple. And then, you know, you can kind of see where people are stuck or where, you know, they're locked in a story or looping or not feeling enough or, and so it's just, it's so, it's just so mm, beautiful, easy to just love somebody there because all we want is to be seen, heard, loved, and felt for who we are, whether it's in our brilliance or are messy on the floor having a temper tantrum. But don't change us. We just want to be witnessed, held, seen, loved, and heard. And then our own natural wisdom takes over. And we are we just emerge bigger and brighter and bolder, bigger, brighter and bolder, bigger, brighter and bolder. And for some of us, it's not about being big and bold. It's about just standing in the truth of who we are 
some it is about being really bold but it's like it just it's about coming back home to self coming back home to who you are peeling back the layers of and the veils of who we had to be to get through or who we were told to be when we were in grade seven and everybody was bullying us or you know the stuff around our sexuality around were we underdeveloped overdeveloped did we like sex not like sex did we oh man were we shamed about this and shamed about our bodies and I mean that the list goes on and so it's like when we stand shoulder to shoulder with other people who really hold us in that, it's almost like we can just go, oh yeah, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Because yes, we've had things happen to us, but we don't need to stand in that victim. I'm not saying victim stance in a bad way, but we don't have to hold on to the stories that have cemented us into some of the, like the sticky bits. Mm-hmm. So I play with people is what I do with, with a lot of laughter as well. You know, I don't take things too serious. So, so when people are really, you know, wanting to have this legendary, legendary life, or even just kind of getting out of the weeds, you know, they're stuck in the weeds. Mm-hmm. Um, it really is about seeing hearing, loving, and feeling another human being. And then, yeah, you have some tricks and tools up your sleeve. But everybody listening to this can do that, can see another human, can hear another human, can love another human, and definitely can feel another human. And so in that, if we can just show up for one another with that sincerity of heart, we could change the world. I know that for a fact. That's so powerful. And I remember one time, um, I have no clue what I was telling you, but you kind of said, you kind of said, well, Marie, you chose not to respect yourself in that way. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't telling you, I was telling you the opposite at that time, but you reminded me of the decision I'd taken at the beginning of our work together, which was a decision that wasn't for me. And sometimes like she just, you just reminded me of you've decided not to respect yourself and we're going to honor that here. And that was like, oh my God, I can like, even when I choose not to respect me, we can still Mm -hmm. honor that. And that's powerful. Of course, that hit me like a slap in the face and that allowed me to just free myself in a different way. But but at the same time, it was like, wow, there's space for everything. And what's what I love, we're talking about belonging in a group, but for that, there's space for everything. I love that space for everything. I'm writing that down because there really is. And when you allow the spaciousness for everything you have freedom and the stars are so aligned because I had this big realization this weekend and from a past life and in that past life I was leading an empire mm-hmm. and the empire every single soul in the empire passed away I was the only one alive and then I was like how do you go on when everybody is dead and they're the word that came was aliveness, but at the same time, I was like, I can't do that. They're all dead. I have to be sad. I have like, can't have fun. And seeing myself as that leader, like they're all passed away. I'm alive. Their mission is complete because they're not here. Mine is still going on. Okay. I'm free to choose how I'm going to act from now on. And then as I came back here in my body and I was like, Oh, how does this message apply apply to me now? And I was like, Oh, I'm not a leader of an empire. I'm a leader of a space. And in that space, nobody has power over anybody. We are all free. Mm -hmm. So we're creating this space here with one of the greats. There's a space for you to be free. Mm -hmm. And there's space for all of us. Now I'm curious because I want to know more about you and what's going on in your world. And one of the things that I 
usually it's tell people. It's like, your past doesn't really tell me much about you. It's where you're going. That tells me where we're going, like wh what's alive for you. And obviously I know that where you're going, Christine, they're like people are going to, the world is going to change. So tell me what's going on in your world. When people get in touch with you, what, what's available? How can they work with you? I, I want to know it all. Wonderful. So personally, what's going on with me um, is I am really blowing open into bigger dimensions. So really starting to work with like the fifth dimension and, and really starting to play with energy to change lives. Like not just so much of like going in there and changing things and like, let's like trudge through it. But I mean, like really, really doing some wicked, um, wicked work. I'm working with um, Joe Dispenza right now. And so a lot of like, you know, rewiring brains and neural pathways and stuff like that. So that's what I'm doing personally um, for the sole mission <laughs> to have a mystical experience which I've been having lots of, and they're a riot. But what it also shows me is the sky is the limit or not even the limit. Like you, you really can have, you can live in the land of potentiality and synchronicity and like, really there's no, there's, there's no fencing. You can have anything you want. And now I'm not someone who is like big in terms of, I want stuff and things. And I mean, I like stuff and things, but that's not really my stuff. Like the things that really get me off are watching, watching people who, you know, went from like here to here or here to here or here to here, or someone who was scared to have to, to, to run their own coaching business. And now they are, or to do a workshop and now they are. So that's kind of what charges me up. Um, so in terms of the work that I'm doing in the world, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, that's a riot. That's so much fun. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, I, I really love that. I love, I love working with people. Oh, I remember. And with you, I, you were, you were at my wedding where like, I, I like yes. married myself. That was so powerful that moment. Yes. So I'm like, yeah, you, you were, you witnessed the change. I mean, and I have the ring that goes with it now. It's like, I have proof that I'm like, but yeah, like, we cannot not be seen, not feeling like it's so present with you. We know that you're there with us and that's beyond powerful. I agree. I, I really agree. Hmm. Um, because when we're safe to be who we are, anything can happen. You can, you can experience the depths of the shadow and you can experience the exaltation of brilliance. And so, you know, I love working with polarities and like shadow work and, you know, inter um, family systems and parts work and, you know, all, hypnosis and all kinds of that stuff. But but really what I love is just people when they're like, holy, holy shit, like I've come home. Like, look at me, I've come home. It's like, yes, you have. So, um, so yeah, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work. I do majority one-on-one -on -one work. Um, and then I'm also doing a retreat in Saskatchewan, which is a, like a hoot. Um, it's a one day retreat and it's, it's all about embodiment. I'm a big embodiment person. If you're not in your body, you know, like, even though I'm studying all this, you know, really far out, wicked potentiality, like energetic realms, if you don't have a body to house it in, I mean, <laughs> you're just out in the stars, you know? So it's like finding that brilliance and then coming home, bringing it home and allowing your brilliance and your excellence and your genius to be birthed out into the world, re regardless of what that is, but it's yours. So then, you know, just really helping people own that. Mm. yeah I'm feeling the calling for I I know like we so hear often of exercises to ground ourselves but somehow I I don't know I'm feeling the call to just have us guide us to our center love it I love it 
So I encourage everybody to um, get comfortable. If it's in your practice, go ahead and close your eyes. If it's not, that's okay too. Just allow yourself to really tune in to your own wisdom with that. Just feeling your body surrendering to gravity. Just notice your heart, this beloved heart. You didn't have to do anything for this heart. Take a breath into your heart, relaxing, letting go. And as you exhale, just allowing any heaviness or burdensome worries to just let go off of your heart. And again, just breathe in, allowing your awareness to come to your heart, bringing love, connection. Sustain with your heart. And then on the next exhale, allowing your awareness to go down your body. And the exhale just allows your awareness to sift down, shift down, relax slowly moving down your body. Every exhale, just allowing you to drift down deeper and deeper, just into your body, slowly, effortlessly, easily. Next exhale allows you to go even down, further down your body. And just notice if there's anything that could be a little bit easier could you soften somewhere? Could you bring breath somewhere? And then allowing your breath to be down at your feet and allowing the little feet to open up into either webbing or roots and allowing these, this webbing and roots to go down into Mama Earth, into Mama Gaia. Feeling the rootedness, the groundedness, the foundation. Feel the nurturance, the nutrients, the love. And then allow your roots to start to find the other leaders, the other sisterhood that is within this group and allow your roots to, to intertwine, your webbing to intertwine allowing where you may not feel super strong, another beautiful human can offer the strength. Maybe you offer the strength for another. Just allow your roots and your webbing to interconnect. Claim your space as one of the greats. If you can't believe that fully, allow the belief of others to infuse you, to hold you in this energy. Feel the foundation, the sturdiness. And allow with every inhalation, Allow your awareness to come back up from the roots into your feet, into your legs, your pelvis. Just allowing every inhalation to come up, coming back to the heart. Breathing into the heart, this sacred heart this creative, beautiful center that is all yours. This center that allows you to connect with those around you. And as you breathe into your heart, ask your heart, what is your sankalpa? What is your intention? 
And allow your heart to give you an image, a thought, a feeling, a sensation. Maybe it's a word. Notice how you want to lead from your own greatness today. What is one thing you can do to allow yourself to express, to live, to stand, to be great, your version of great, your version of great. It might be to take time to recharge, or it might be to do something for someone else. Just notice what you hear for yourself. Is it to be more present with those you love, or go for a walk? And just placing your hands on your heart if it feels like it's in your practice and just giving gratitude, appreciation for that which is your life. All the things you've been blessed with. All the things you will be blessed with. And then when you feel ready, slowly opening your eyes, but only open them to about 20% of the Focus, don't look right at the screen. Just allow yourself to come back slowly, looking around the room. If your body wants to move or shift, allow that to happen. What came up for me was this deep desire to talk with you about presence mm -hmm. because it's so easy nowadays to listen to someone grounding us and just listen. Yes. <laughs> And what comes up for me is like, it's a human experience and it happens in a temple called the body and presence can only be in that body. And I'm wondering, because I'm thinking you're the right person to ask that question, because for so long, I've had this fear of feeling. I still do. I still do very often. And actually I still do. It's very easy to feel dark. Like that's easy, but feeling the joy, allowing myself the joy of the presence, being present in that, like, how do you stay with it? Beautiful question. And I think, Marie, that is a question so many people want to ask, but don't know to ask it because it's just off the radar. You mentioned that the body is our temple. Our whole experience of life lives in this body. Yet, many of us are not there for it. We stay in this cognitive brain. And, you know, if I say, go to your heart, you're like, oh, yeah, I think I, I, think I got that. Cool. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, pelvis. She said pelvis. Okay. So you kind of like, you know, look at your pelvis from like four feet away. And that's okay. And I'm normalizing the fact that we all do it and it's okay. And what happens is, is over time when we are allowed to feel and allowed to be present with, present with anything that's arising in our body, we feel. I always say, when people say, what can I expect when I work with you? And I'm like, uh, that you're going to feel alive. But you know what that means? All of it. All of it. 
That means feeling sensations from quivering, warmth, to tightness, to flowing, but you feel yourself. So I think it really comes down to pausing. So having a practice in your day where you just, you put a timer on your phone three times a day for one minute and you pause and you go inside yourself and you just do a little body scan and you give yourself one minute to go, okay, am I breathing? Is my arsehole puckered? Do I need to relax my whole pelvic floor? Do I need to have a little shake? Like, am I wound up? Is my jaw tight? Do I have to go to the bathroom? Am I dehydrated? And in those little moments, what we start to build is something called a container. It's like an ability to be with ourselves. And the more we do it, the more we trust that whatever's in here, and here's the, tr here's the secret, whatever is in here, we've already survived. Mm. Whatever is in here, we have already survived. So nothing needs to be foreign to us. We don't have to close the doors on a tightness or an ache or a pain or a fear. It's in, it's in here anyway. And so, and we've already survived it. So it really is about allowing ourselves to get more intimate and more intimate and more intimate with the sensations in the body. By sensations, I mean hot, cold, jittery, um, melting, shaky, tight, gripping, you know? And when we can start to allow ourselves the wisdom of the body to show up, then, then our trust in ourselves starts to really flourish. And we go, oh, geez. I, when I felt that visceral or the, the organ tightening, I thought I was, it felt like I was going to die, but I didn't die. Mm. And all of a sudden the body goes, see, see there, there, it's no problem. You already survived it. You're just going back and kind of like, picking up any of the little pieces that you haven't yet repaired or haven't yet loved, heard, seen, and felt. And the more you can do that, the more the body becomes available to you. When you have more of a body that's available to you, you also have the ability to feel into your yeses and nos in life. Do I want to, is this the right coaching person? And your body will be like, yeah, fuck yeah, that, that feels exciting. Or, whoa, my body's, there's something off here. Or something as simple as, you know, I want these two things for supper. Well, feel in, what does your body desire? Oh, and your body will tell you. So whenever someone says, I'm grounded, I say, tell me how you know that. Tell me how, how do you know that? What in your body tells you that you're grounded? Well, I can feel my bum in the chair. Ah, nice. Is one side feeling heavier than the other? And then people have to go in and go and look. They go in and look. And they're like, oh, the right side. Ah, so notice that. What's it like? Hmm, heaviness, cold. Oh. Is there anywhere else in your body that feels heavy? And then they go in and they just like look around. And they're like, oh, this place or that place. It's like, oh, beautiful. That's grounded. That's presence. Presence is when you go in and you are, you are able to be with what is present in the moment. And it is a skill. It's not something that you're just like, you know, like you got to go to kindergarten and then you got to go to grade one, grade two, and grade three, and then you get your PhD level, right? But, and then you'll have stuff go on in your life and you'll <laughs> come back a few notches. It's like, oh, 
and we're all humbled, you know, myself included. I love this exercise. It's so easy. And I, I felt that when I have practiced it, it was like, It was a way for my mind to finally know that we are fe we are safe in feeling. It was like, oh, I felt and I didn't die. Great. And I what I did is I like sometimes push things a little bit further. I took notes of that minute. What did it feel like? What what is my conclusion now? Oh. I the first time I wrote I didn't die <laughs> but that's what it was like and I was like oh now how and so I love that we get to connect and we can create the space with this exercise to just say oh I'm okay and then 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 I have collected evidence that can yeah. tell my brain next time I'm think I'm dying I am not yes. I know I live it But I feel this exercise is just about the most precious that people can do. And it's so simple. I mean, it's a minute. And do a minute like this. You said three times a day. Do it for one week and your life has changed. Completely. We don't learn that in school. How I come? know. And, and you know, Marie, it, because what, you know, if we, de if we even deepen this, con this conversation, this concept, like even one layer deeper and we think, okay, Oh, like one minute as if, you know, Marie said that in one week, you know, my life could change. Yeah, it can. Because I call it the sacred pause. You're pausing for a moment in time to go, I'm, I'm just, I need to pause this conversation or I need to pause what I'm doing and come back home and check in. What does that allow? It allows emotional intelligence So we're not so much in reactivity. It allows us to connect in with ourselves and govern our lives from our own sovereignty versus looking outside of ourselves for what we think we should be doing, who we think we should be acting, how we should be acting. And we start to govern from our own sovereignty. And then we recognize, oh my goodness, nothing, nothing catastrophic happened. This is where good boundaries come in. We start mm -hmm. to be able to pull in boundaries into our, into our systems when we, when we go, wow, no, some, something's not okay. I'm willing to do that, but not that. Because I can feel it. It's my own integrity inside. But when we are navigating from just the analytical mind and just thinking things through and not feeling things through, well, we get ourselves into a little bit of trouble because then we just, we think, Oh, I read this, you know, I read this book and this is how it should be. So that's what I'm going to do. Or we stay in comparison. Well, this is what Marie does or so-and-so does. So then I'll do that. And say, like, you haven't checked in to see if that's your truth. My truth is not your truth. Your truth is not mine. Our jobs when we are in union or communion together is for me to sit there and say, my love, tell me your truth. I will honor it and I will worship you completely. Mm. And all I want in return is the same. There's variety in the world. We are all unique, different, precious. But we never get to feel how others are unique and precious if we're not allowing ourselves to be first. Mm. And so we're not allowing this variety to be okay if we're always judging ourselves. And that's where this exercise is not about judging. It's just about looking at, oh, what's going on? Here's what's going on. And that's it. What's going on? Great. I'm not making it mean something about me. I'm just feeling it. But when I allow this for me, I allow it for the entire world. And that's how we create a new world again. Right. Because again, to even deepen that one layer more. So let's say you are speaking with your lover or your child or your whomever, it doesn't matter. 
and your timer goes off and you just say, let me pause. And you can allow yourself to come back home inside. You are showing up so much more authentic for your child, for your partner, for whoever you're in relationship with. Stripping away the comparison, stripping away that I've got to do it how all, <laughs> how all the other parents are doing it. Oh gosh, like, no, do it your way. And, and when you do it your way, I have a, um, a mentor of mine who said, there's, there's two ways to live in life. One is to live everybody else's version of you. Mm -hmm. or you live you and then he said and I guarantee you with a hundred percent um guarantee that if you are living your authentic life there will be lots of people who do not like you but then the people who do are your energetic match they they feel heard by you, seen by you, loved by you. You're standing in your greatness. You're standing in who you are. You're not hiding behind. If we're in our people pleaser mode, trying to be the good daughter and be the good mother and be the good school volunteer and be the good whatever, 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 we're going to have a lot of people like us, but who are they liking? Not the real, not the real part of us. So, you know, when we're, when we're writing, write from our own truth. When we're speaking, speak from our own truth and be willing to not be liked. And then you will find your tribe. Then people always say to me, Christine, I can't find my tribe. I'm like, bullshit, absolute bullshit. Because if you just start to be you, I mean, really you, people flock. It's like moths to a light. They come. But when you're veiled and you peek out every, you know, now and again, that doesn't, it doesn't feel very safe for others to show up vulnerably. Therefore, that <clears throat> deep feeling of belonging. Hmm. And it takes courage to show up as you. But then again, we don't even have to worry about that. Because if you're here, it's because you're a match to that already. It's already in you. And if we let you in on another secret, you came with fear. That means the courage comes because of fear. So if you have fears, you're good. Your courage came with it. That's right. And you know, just to what you had said earlier, Marie, about when you are, when you, when you do take your place at the table, all those people at the table play with fear and courage on the daily. So if you are shaking in your shoes and you say something a little off or, or whatever, it is so easy to be with you because for the people at the table, they do it daily. It's their mantra. It's like, I know I'm going to get scared when I'm doing something that means something, that has some passion. And so I know that there's going to be times where I fall down, but I'm choosing to fall down face first. And then you have sisters around you to pick you up and say, yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's just dust you off. You're good. You're fine. But surrounding yourself with people that are doing the same things. And it's interesting as you're saying this, I mean, we hear that all the time, but I want to say it the other way. Why in the world would you not align or connect with people that are, that make you feel good, that make you feel alive, that make you feel more of you? Because we're stuck in victimhood, because we are stuck in what we know, because we are addicted physiologically to getting hits of shame, blame, Um, embarrassment. We are, we physiologically are addicted to it. And so mm -hmm, I'll pause there for a second. 
because a lot of people are like, what? We I are love addicted that. to it. I love that answer because it, like the last week for me has been all about looking at shame. So I'm like, yeah, of course, that's what it feels like now that I like now that that's released of course there's more layers i know but there's so much that was released i'm like yeah true now i feel like my energy is not the same i feel like i can connect totally differently because i made space but i also mostly feel like i am empowered times a million compared to what i was before so making space for just allowing what is or yeah. witnessing what is changes it all completely changes it all creates a completely different game because when we have the ability to sit with the sensations of shame shame are awful shame the sensations of shame is attached to death and dying so when we're little we have shame as something that, so if, if within our tribe back 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 in the day If, if there is 50 people in a tribe and you're three years old and you go and you're hungry and you eat a good portion of the tribe's food, well, now you put the tribe at survival risk. So the tribe is going to shame this little person so that they don't ever do it again because they have put the tribe at survival risk. Yeah. So shame is deeply loaded. And it makes you feel like you are going to die because that's what it's intended to do. So when we have the ability to feel it, the heat in our belly, often the shakiness, often the, you know, like everything's fast, the energy rises, you know, like everything goes to the head. Everything's like, ah, I can't do this. And you can sit with it and let it move through then our ability to be amongst others who have shame, it starts to dissipate because let's face it, everybody has it. One of the biggest antidotes for shame as your, you know, your folks probably know is, is empathy. It's like, yeah, me too. I have shame too. That scares me too. So. I love that. And I find that to me, there was such powerful messages in the shame. It was so about, oh, yeah, I kind of inherited that. But now we are not cavemans anymore. Things are different. I am safe right now. And in my power, what's what, what am I holding that feels true and right and, and like honoring who I am? And that was like, oh no more shame from that point of view because I'm so empowered now. I so truly believe that that's exactly why this game and I'm willing to let it go now. Like I'm willing to live it, experience it and know it's not who I am. And then from there, anytime I witness it, it's the same for every single being. It's not them. It's not who they are. So I can like, let them be. I allow them to be themselves because I lived it, because I looked at it, because I make space for it. So we all get to witness ourselves first, mm -hmm. and then we get to witness the world. You know, and in that, Marie, I would ask, like, what was shame's job? Like, it was trying to do something really beautiful for you, you know? What was it? Definitely. For me, it was, it was so huge, because the shame that I had like led to my past life that I saw. Mm -hmm. It was all about, there's this part of me that's like, Marie wants to build her empire. I want to build my empire. And the word my in the phrase stood out and it didn't work. So I had <laughs> such shame there. Yes. I was like, no, me, I can't. No, 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 not possible. But then it's funny because allowing the feeling of the shame and everything else and going in that past life, I realized empire, That's the word that doesn't work for me. I want a space for people. I don't want an empire. Empire feels like it's fighting something. We're not fighting. We're welcoming everyone. So I was like, oh, but now I can say that I'm building my space. But because I'm really honest and connected, my means me and everybody else that wants to be free. 
So the message of that shame was actually, honestly, I believe life-changing yeah. for me and for thousands of other people, people that will be impacted by this. But that was me just feeling the shame once, to be honest. Yeah. So sometimes feeling something in one small way can spark something so big, you have no idea. Imagine when you choose to keep on like, once you know that you're safe feeling it and you allow yourself to get those messages, you get treasure after treasure of who you are and like in your truth. Mm -hmm. That was one space that I opened. I'll open a thousand more, a million more probably. Right. Because you're willing to open the spaces and you're willing to walk through the portals and you're willing to, you're willing to go and you're willing to have, you know, the, 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 the pedal running down your legs, you're willing to be scared. You know, Maria, I had mentioned that the word leader really freaked me out a while back. And I too had the same kind of, um, you know, in a past life, really, or a past life relationship in a past life vision. Um, I, I was, um, the leader of a, a really big group of women. And, um, and again, for people who believe in past lives, great for people who don't in one ear and out the other, no big deal. But, but it was all of my people had been, um, killed. So for me, the idea of leadership was like, (laughs) no, all the people I loved, all the people I communed with, all the people that I did ritual with, all the people that you know, we taught and we shared and we did life, you know, that like, I wasn't able to save them. Um, and again, recognizing that a lot of these things don't always make sense, but it's because it was a different time, right? So then in this life, I'm sitting here and, you know, wanting to speak up and wanting to, you know, really empower women so deeply, but there's a deep fear inside that I was like, why, what is this fear? Like crippling fear, like, like mute, like I couldn't speak. And, and when I found this piece, I was like, ah, oh, there it is. And then it's like, there, there, love. Of course you would be scared to own that word leadership or great or being willing to, you know, step a step ahead and, and, and lead. Because when you step ahead and lead, Sometimes you have a target on your back and that's just the reality of it. And that's okay. We're in a different time now, but my physiology, my nervous system didn't get that memo. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Totally. It was sent in smoke signal. I didn't catch it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So the, we have these huge, these huge desires and passions. We know that's why I say, Follow what feels alive, because when you follow what feels alive, the gold is always at the other end. That that gift, the gold, the the beauty is always there. But the universe has a little funny way of you got to fight for it sometimes. You got to go for it sometimes. You don't get it on a silver platter because it doesn't mean as much. It's not as rich for you. So you, it's like the universe says, yeah, you got it. Show me how badly you want it. And so there will always be this knocking at your door, so to speak, or this like, go, no, 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 go. And you will have a rupture, whether it's through illness or trauma or death or something will come and rupture so that you live that essence, your soul wants to develop your soul, your spirit want to gain the, you know, like you, like with yourself over this past weekend, you know, your soul came knocking and said, look here, we've got to clean some stuff up because your next iteration of yourself or your next step into yourself is really holding this bigness of us connection all of us together, we rise. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
So you can, you know, your soul will, your soul will knock and you'll have a rupture of some sort that just kind of kicks in the ass and you will be challenged. But when you have people on either end of your shoulders saying, no, 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 you keep on going, ah, 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 keep going. God, life is fun and great and challenging and beautiful. As, as, what is it, um, Glennon? Uh, Glennon Doyle she says brutal right it's brutal and beautiful right it's like it is brutal it's it's both but I'm like without those challenges there wouldn't even be a life so it's what makes it all fun and that's why you and I connected Because as I said before, I want to be fully used up at the end of this. I want it all. I want it all. I want to experience the highs and the lows. I want to experience the full totality of life as we know it. For lots of people, mediocrity is good for them. And great. Hallelujah. Great. Something will come in and shift your ass and you will get, you'll get, You'll get a, a rupture of some sort, but I actively choose them. I actively say, okay, I want to see what this feels like. I want to go. I want to be with other greats that, that say, oh, yeah, I tried this or I did that. It's like, okay, cool. You know, like I want the full spectrum of life. And I want it deep. Like I, you know, relationships that I have, like with yourself, whether we are talking and professional level or personal level i i don't tend to be a surface swimmer i want to go it's like who are you what makes you tick marie i don't care all the photoshopped things and all the well put together things i want to know who you are underneath it all who are you where's the passion what drives you your aliveness show it to me I want more, fill a room or not, you know, but it's like, that's when life is juicy. Coming back to your words you said earlier, let's play. Yeah, let's play. Hmm. I'm so, so, so grateful you, you uh, gifted us of your presence of your magic of your energy like it's so beautiful you are I'm, I'm so proud that people get to like touch you like if for, it's been so long in my heart like I want people to get to know her even more but I'm like finally perfect timing I'm grateful for that and of course in the show notes I'll put how people can reach you but how can they reach you yeah you can reach me um through Facebook at Christine Stinson Borschnick Uh, my handle on Instagram is Christine Borschnick. I also have a website called www.heartsamadi.com, spelled H E A R T S A M D H I, and that stands for Enlightened Heart. Um, and so those are probably the, the easiest three. Um, yeah. Feel free to reach out to me, I'm easily available. Um, because I really, I'm really dedicated to this work, so. And the energy is so felt. I remember the way I found you. Actually, I was, I knew I was looking for a sex coach at that moment, but it was like, I don't know, three o'clock in the morning and I'm discouraged, things, things to shift. And, and, it, and I remember like going to different and I, different people and I see your face and then I went on your site and I mean, I don't know. The magic was already there. Mm -hmm. So it was like, we got on the phone, but I was like, I don't even need to be on the phone. Just tell me how much I need to pay. I know I'm going there. And I haven't seen a single video of you. I didn't even know what you look like. I knew nothing, yeah. but it was like, I know it. And so often, like we're talking about feeling your body today. How often do you, do you resist what you feel? You have beautiful opportunities every single day. To me, that was obvious. It was a yes. Mm -hmm. 
I could have fight it, but that was the best gift I offered myself. So I wish the same for all of you. When you get those yeses, follow that. Mm -hmm. So powerful. Yeah, it, you know, it's so true. Th those have been my biggest monumental moments of my life when my body says now or go. When that energy aligns and your body says yes and you have no idea, those are always the, my most favorite. When we choose to trust. Yes. Yeah. When you tr choose to trust and, and let go of the analytical mind and allow this, you know, this, this feminine flow to really guide your life. <laughs> it's magic all the way. Mm, Truly. So much. Yeah. So I'm honored have lived this experience with you is there any last word you want to leave one of the greats with i want everybody to know that they are most certainly undoubtedly in their own way the great hmm. that's what i would say and to you my friend i want to say thank you for doing the work and being willing to really step in and be unbridled in your rawness, in your realness, in your vulnerability. You allow people to be more of who they are in your presence. You see people, you feel people, you hear people, you love them. So from my very deepest heart, I honor you. Thank you. So much as a fellow sister. And so thank you for having me here and sending you so much love. Mm, we're if anything, <laughs> yes. If there's anything you need in the future, don't ever hesitate to reach out. Same here. And I want to say to all of you, one of the greats, the magic you felt here, it's all in you. It's all alive. It's all very true. And there's a space for you to be you. And we're welcoming you here. And I really feel, leave in the comments, what was your takeaways today? What did you get from this? Like, what are you understanding on a deeper way? What was powerful for you? Come and write to Christine. I mean, she's the bomb. And I know she wants, like, I know she's going to feel the love. She's mm -hmm. ready to receive all of your love. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and I will see you on the next episode. Much love. Ciao.